So I just wanted to briefly explain um, the Student Opportunity Act and uh, how AMSA receives funds, which is a little mystic. Um, basically, it's an act that focuses on disparities in achievement. So we're looking at our lowest achieving subgroups. And right now, this is year three of a six-year commitment that the state has made to fund this Student Opportunity Act. So AMSA doesn't receive the funds directly. Uh, Liana at one point in time tried to find out what our Student Opportunity Act funds were uh, in order to kind of gauge what our investment should be in it. Uh, but it is built into the tuition number. So we're still required to create a plan uh, to address our the disparities as the state sees them. Uh, so it's a three-year plan targeting those students with the achievement gaps, and AMSA is going to focus on targeting students with disabilities and students classified as belonging to the low income subgroup, because that is where we see our greatest gaps. So this is just some data for you all. I'm just going to get my little face out of there. Um, and as you can see, AMSA still does significantly better than the state, which is something to be hugely proud of. But just because we're doing better doesn't mean that we don't focus and target our interventions towards students who need it the most. Okay. So at AMSA, you can see that our general population um, is doing well. Um, this is the percent of students meeting and exceeding expectations. So overall, uh, in grade six, it's 43%. But when we look at the students with disabilities, only 29% are meeting and exceeding. And that's where we see the gap. So again, we, we do better than the state, but we can see that our gap falls with students with disabilities and our classified low income students. Interestingly enough, when you look at grades seven, eight, and 10, there's not enough data to, to have them as a subgroup, which means again, that AMSA is doing a really great job getting kids uh, up to par and closing that gap. In fact, they may no longer need their uh, individual education plans, thereby lowering the IEP numbers and not having enough data to report. Uh, we can still see a gap between our low income students and students not classified as low, low income. Uh, it gets much closer in grade 10, but we're still a little bit behind. This is English now. Again, our scores are well above the state level for meeting and exceeding. And here we are looking at students with disabilities and students uh, classified as low income. And we see our gap that we have to address. So how are we going to do it? Um, we're going to work uh, with three research-based practices. One is comprehensive tiered support systems. And we've been working on that this year. Our department, our academic department chairs have been really working hard with their departments to identify supports that we will, you know, we've been giving and we will give um, in the classroom and, and wrapping that all up into a district curriculum accommodation plan so that everyone, uh, our families, all of our stakeholders understand what support we provide in our classroom. We're gonna continue that by creating uh, an outline of everything AMSA does so that when others come in and they take a look at AMSA, we're all speaking the same language. And when someone asks about like MTS or DCAP or all these acronyms, everyone on staff knows what they mean and they can explain it. Uh, because I think that we do more, but we don't always communicate what we're doing. Uh, the second thing is we're going to do some targeted support um, by developing an intervention program that targets the lowest performing groups and provides direct math, science, and English intervention combined with social emotional learning supports. And you'll see that through our math intervention program and with our peer coaching. Also, high leverage practices for students with disabilities. We're going to be looking at 
training staff in high level leverage instructional practices designed for students with disabilities through our PLCs next year as an offering in our PLCs. So what, uh, how, do, how do we carry out this plan? Well, we're offering all the incoming sixth graders uh, access to our Summer Acceleration Academy. We've just opened that up to our rising seventh graders, so the current sixth graders. Uh, a couple of questions that our community keeps asking about the Summer Academy is, can I come for a week? Or can I come for two weeks instead of the four-week program? Since this is grant funded and it is funded by the Department of Education, they expect students to be there every day. If we have low enrollment, we may try to branch off some separate weeks. But as of right now, the answer is you, you do need to attend all four weeks. We will be continuing with our math intervention program. It's very successful. Our teachers work small group one-on-one -on -one with kids that are struggling. And these kids are identified throughout the year. They kind of go in the program and come out of the program based on their needs. We're going to continue our peer academic coaching and our MCAS prep. And with these targeted supports, we feel that that gap will close for us or continue to close. Engagement, we need to also um, have a list of engagement strategies in order to fulfill the plan, the SOA plan. Uh, family engagement opportunities we're going to really focus on celebrating diversity, celebrating our academic excellence. I don't think we do that enough. I don't think we tell our story enough. Um, we're going to look to provide formal and informal opportunities for this kind of engagement with our families. Community mapping, counseling staff um, partnered uh, is going to partner with outreach to create a kind of a community map to identify community resources available to our families and share that with our families. We'll be continuing our community advocacy program, uh, partnering with the Charter Association uh, to implement uh, all sorts of advocacy activities. Right now, uh, we are asking our students and our families to kind of fill out a little why AMSA is important to them and, and why they've been successful at AMSA. So we're gonna continue all those activities with the Charter Association and we're going to look to, you know, partner with the PTO to really expand that to be more of a parent network program. So network of parents who can act as liaisons for other parents, sharing information and encouraging uh, engagement. And we will measure this by the annual family engagement survey that I believe just went out from the education committee. Uh, next steps, we need the board to vote to approve this plan. Um, and then uh, it's my job and Mr. Naraki's job and Ms. Sensi's job to work with the, the staff to carry out the plan. And then we monitor and um, we, uh, we monitor and we see how close we get to the targets and we have to report out on it um, annually.